guy here with your hard arm trying to film a video. You're the one with the hard with arm. My hard arm. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another Mob Bros video. This one, we're gonna be doing an update on my homemade internals retaliator. So recently, I started fiddling around with new O-rings and whatnot because my original breach was made with just like some long shot O-rings and whatnot. And since they worked fine with the plastic sink drain, but now that I've upgraded to the metal sink drain, which has a slightly larger ID, I was not getting a very good seal. And with my original barrel, this one, which you guys have all seen with the suppressor, it already has a scar in there, so I couldn't actually test the seal of the entire system altogether. I could only test really the plunder, the plunder rod and the plunder tube, and that I knew was perfect, so I was like, oh, this is great. And I was still only getting around 200 with the 25 newton. But recently, this is just an update, and we're gonna be showing off the new FPS with the new seals. The new seals, I'll show you guys, but it's double O-rings, plus a washer, big money. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so this is just a fresh foot of brass because we were testing earlier and my my current barrel that I'm running hits 200 nicely, but it's a little short to get maximum performance. So we're gonna get that bitch out of here. We're gonna fire off a selection of half lengths through our chronograph with a fresh foot of brass. Now, I would like to forewarn that this is a retaliator with a very well-worn, <laughs> well-worked 25 Newton spring. And I know like, People say it doesn't really do very much if you, your spring shortens or gets weaker over time, but like, I just want to say, if it, this was a fresh spring, it might get better performance. And also, this is just a standard foot of brass. We can maybe go longer, maybe a little shorter, maybe a wax barrel. To get all kinds of pressure rings. Yeah, pressure rings. Uh, my old current barrel has pressure rings, and I think it really helps and whatnot, so I could add those to the flesh foot of brass. I'll probably make a new barrel for this, so that way I can get better performance, but I'm just gonna show you off the FPS. Uh, firing off a half-length ACC. Wow. He fell in front of the gate. All right, we're gonna retry that, because <laughs> it didn't register. Sorry, you guys can't really see the blaster very well. I could zoom out, but that's a lot of Oh! 211 with the first shot. Now I'm gonna switch over to a half length worker dart. Oh. 188, interesting. Are just camera shy. Mm, camera shy. Uh, yeah, I would like to point out uh, outside of this filming, we were testing earlier with this foot of brass, and I was getting 250s to 300. Mm. <laughs> so. I think Tucker was right because I just hit 230. And uh, I think that's really interesting because I've been doing a lot of research on retaliator internals and whatnot. And from what I can tell, Blaster Tech Dean with his VT27 spring, which is probably the strongest retaliator platform spring out there. It's the strongest. Yeah. He was really only getting 230 with that spring in a worker prophecy internals. Whereas mine is a brass breach homemade internals with a 25 newton, you guys can see there, it's at near full compression. Sorry about that. <laughs> 221. My bad, brother. <laughs> My throat. <laughs> we put the owl there to keep the darts from bouncing back, but the ACCs are so bouncy that they still are. <laughs> Averaging at 215, and I was including a few of those that I was shooting not properly through the chronograph. I'll show you guys if I want to. Yep. So hitting fairly nicely, and that is with a 25 newton spring. I'm fully certain that with a properly tuned barrel and maybe even just like a 28 newton, <laughs> I could get better performance. But I'm excited because this means there's more potential to get a 300 FPS retaliator. <laughs> there which is really cool but i'm going to take it all apart for you guys now so i can show you my upgraded seals 
Uh, so yeah, here you guys can see it's a 25 Newton spring. I don't really know how to confirm that with you, but it's what I've been posting about recently. If you follow on Reddit or Facebook and whatnot, I showed, <laughs> hey, my short be looking real short all of a sudden. <laughs> Just trust us. It's a 25 Newton. <laughs> yeah, totally not lying to you. It's a 28. <laughs> I swear, <laughs> it's a 25. I got it when it first came out. Uh, I may end up getting a 28 just because I feel like I'm going to be having more blasters running these style of internals, so I might need more springs. Oh, yeah. Maybe even do a bulk order and just have a bunch of them. Maybe even sell some of them. <coughs> <coughs> Alright guys, so I recently took this blaster apart just to do maintenance and check it out, but here's my acrylic and metal catch and it is showing no signs of wear whatsoever, so I'm happy about that. Looks real nice. And... For those of you who may be wondering, this is the only catch spring I'm running. It's the stock retaliator catch spring. <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh. Because of how it seals and catches and how, since I have, since I have the spring in the center mm -hmm. of the catch, it's applying a more direct force downward instead of being on the side and causing yeah. an, off, an off kilter force vector. It actually catches with the stock catch spring. <sighs> Uh, another addition I did is I recently added a little bit of brass onto my plunder rod just to extend it backwards a little bit. Ooh, look at all that grease. Because my original plunder rod ended about here, and I was afraid that maybe when it's firing, I was going to have some deflection causing a seal to be problematic. And I still think I might be having it because it's not truly at a harm scenario. So it holds for a little bit, but then it slowly leaks out. So I think maybe my skirt seal might be causing problems and whatnot with that, but I'm still very happy with that platform. But I'll shut up about that because this is what you guys are really here for. Oh. Dude, I greased the heck out of it. <laughs> oh, grease all my fingers. All right, uh, doesn't really come across on camera very well, but it's two uh, one and a quarter inch O-rings that fit around one inch PVC perfectly and they fit in the punter tube really nicely. They're no, bitch to get in there. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have the next five minutes of this video be me struggling to get them back into the plunder tube. But once they're in there, they seal really nicely and there's very low friction. And then I just have a rubber washer on the back to provide one final seal. So it's technically three layers of seals on here. I was not letting air, any air leak out of this after finding out that I had basically no air seal on this before. But then it also serves as a nice little dampener on it, which I think definitely helps because it's quite quiet now that it actually shoots. All right, well, let's start the process. I'm to pull up my chair. I'm trying to remember how I did this back in my house. Ah, got it. All right, guys, well, that's it for this update video. I know this one was just a really small one that we can put out there, but I just wanted to sort of show off basically, but I'll be probably posting another update video once I get the final barrel all finished. My plan is to make a new barrel with 17 30 seconds and make a whole full length dart finger so that way I'll be able to feed half length and full lengths just fine and not have any problems with that because currently it doesn't really feed half lengths that well. But yeah, so I hope you guys liked it. If you have any questions about my retaliator, please let me know in the comment section below and if you guys could subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. But that's going to be it for this video and I'll check you out in the next one. Bye!